Hello everyone. In this video, I will discuss about what is a JSP and life cycle of JSP. Let's start our discussion. JSP. JSP stands for Java Server Pages. It is a collection of technologies that helps software developers to create dynamically generated web pages based on HTML, XML, and CSS, etc. That means we are embedding the JSP code into HTML pages. JSP was introduced by Sun Microsystems in 1999. Let's see what is the life cycle of JSPs. The life cycle of the JSP is exactly similar to the life cycle of Servlet with an additional first step, which is translation of JSP code to the Servlet. The translation of JSP page to Servlet is called life cycle of JSP. First of all, the browser sends the request to the server, then JSP gets the request and generates the response to the browser. But internally, lot of things has to be done to process the request and generates the response. For every user request, init method is involved. Here all initialization and configurations are performed like database connection creation and initialization parameters and etc. Init method calls JSP service method. Here the embedded JSP code translated into servlets and executed. The JSP code is nothing but Java embedded code within HTML. At last, JSP destroy method is invoked to destroy the objects and perform some cleanup activities like closing the database request and etc. Let's see what internally happens in JSPs. That means how a JSP page is converted to servlet in order to service the request. We can call it as lifecycle stages of JSPs. Generally, seven lifecycle stages are there in JSPs lifecycle. The stage one is translation of JSP to servlet code. Stage two, compilation of servlet to bytecode. Stage three, loading servlet classes. Stage four, creating servlet instances. Stage five, initialization by calling JSP init method. Stage six, request processing by calling underscore JSP service method. Stage seven, destroying by calling JSP destroy method. Let's see all lifecycle stages of JSPs in one by one. The stage one is translation of JSP to servlet code. The web container translates the JSP code into a servlet source file. Here the web container is nothing but server like Tomcat, Jetty, Glassfish, etc. This is the first step of multiple phases life cycle. In this translation phase, the container validates the syntactic correctness of the JSP page and tag files. The container interprets the standard directives and actions and the custom actions used in the pages. Second stage is compilation of servlet to bytecode. The JSP engine compiles the servlet into an executable class and forwards the original request to the servlet engine. The translation of JSP source page into its implementation class can be happened at any time between the initial deployment of the JSP page into the JSP container. The process of client request for the targeted JSP page. That means the first two stages are completed at the time of deployment or first request by the user. Stage 3 is loading servlet classes. The Java servlet class that was compiled from the JSP source and it is loaded into the container. Here a dot class file is generated in stage 2 that is loaded into the container to the process the request. Stage 4 creating servlet instance. This is like execution. In this execution phase, the container manages one or more instances of this class in response to the requests and other events. 
stays five. Initialization by calling JSP init method. The actual execution starts from the stays file. When a container loads a JSP, it invokes the JSP init method before servicing any request. We can perform JSP specific initialization and override JSP init method. Initialization is performed only once and as with the service init method. Generally initialize the database connections, open files and create lookup tables in the JSP init method. Stage 6 Request Processing by Calling Underscore JSP Service Method This phase of JSP lifecycle represents all interactions with the request until the JSP is destroyed. Whenever a browser requests a JSP and the page has been loaded and initialized, the JSP engine invokes the JSP service method in a JSP. The JSP service method takes an HTTP request and an HTTP response as its parameters. The JSP service method of JSP is invoked on the request basis. This is responsible for generating the responses for request. Stage 7 Destroying by calling JSP destroy method. The destruction phase of JSP lifecycle represents when a JSP is being removed from use by a container. The JSP destroy method is the JSP equivalent of the destroy method for serverless. Override JSP destroy method when you need to perform any cleanups such as releasing database connections, closing open files and etc. When the call to destroy method is made, then the JSP is ready for garbage collection. This is the end of the JSP lifecycle. This is the sample code for JSP. We are embedding the JSP code into HTML page. 